Hi, this is Mr. Long, and we're doing the fourth question in a little Delphi test, which gives us just the basics into Delphi. You just get us started with some basic calculations, and we're going to get a little bit more advanced now with question four. Um, so here we have a program where there is a circle which has details about a button, and it takes as input just the radius through an edit control, and then we've got to work out the circumference and the area and things like that using these calculations, mathematical things. And we must display it like that. And that is a memo control. And that is displayed slightly differently to what we used to with edit controls. So let's get stuck in. Um, so there we go. There's our radius that we want to get. And there's the button. We're going to ignore that for now. I think that's the next question. So there we go. We have variables declared for us, which is great. And so now we're going to do the first step, which is the input, which means we're going to get the value from the edit controls and store them into variables. So we're storing it into our rad. And what are we storing it? We're storing whatever the user types into the radius edit box. So how do we get what they typed in? Well, that's the text property. But let's remember the text property is a string. And that is a real. So we must convert it from what it is, a string, to what we want it to be, a real, or in this case, a float, which is the code, if Mr. Long spells it correctly, float for the edit control. So it takes this text, converts it from a string to a float, and puts that float into the real. Because floats and reels are the same thing, so they fit now. You can't put strings into reels, you've got to only put floats, so we've got to convert it first. That is the only input that we need and then after that we need to work out the circumference which is 2 times pi times whatever the radius is and the area is pi times the, the radius squared so we're going to need some sort of mathematical functions when we do this so there I'm going to start with the circumference there's a variable declared for us and that is equal to 2 times it now I can just type in pi that is a pre given value a constant in Delphi, pi will have the value that it needs to for pi, so you don't need to worry about giving it a particular value, you don't need to worry about declaring that as a variable, it, it's already being used in Delphi, and then we times it by whatever the user typed in the radius, so there's the radius variable, so there, the, the step by the way is our processing, we are calculating the answers and storing them into variables, so that's the circumference. The area, however, is pi r squared. So we've got to take pi and multiply it by the radius squared. Now, how do we square the radius? Well, there are two ways. We could, oh, well, there are lots of ways, actually. We could say radius times r radius to square it. That's one way. Or we could use the square function. There is a square function, which takes whatever's in the brackets and squares it, or we can, there's a power function as well. I can say power r rad to the power of 2. Now you might say, well, why are you lying to me? Because that power has got a red line under it. Well, if it's got a red line, it might be because we need to add the, the maths library to the top so that it can recognize power. There we go, now it recognizes power. So there you go. So, so power times the radius to the power of Great, so we worked out the area, worked out the circumference. Now let's get to the output, and we want to display it like this. So the first thing we're displaying is the circle details heading. Now, with the memo control, we're not changing a text variable. There's no text property that we want to change, because that gets changed. If we change the text property, then it's going to overwrite whatever we did before then. What we want to do is use the, we want to add lines to it. So what is that memo called mem display so we're not going to change the text because if i change the text now and then i change the text later it's going to override it so we just want to add lines so i'm going to say lines dot add so the first thing i want to add is the word what did they say circle details well the words circle details and that's a string memo controls that when you add lines they're all strings that's the first thing i'm going to add then i'm going to say lines dot add and now we want to add the word radius, colon, and then what the value. Now you notice this is all lastly lined up there. That's because it's using tab. So we're going to say the word radius, the colon, and then I'm going to put a tab in, and that's hash nine. That's the code for a tab. And then I will add the R rad variable. However, we're building a string here because add only takes string. So that's a string 
plus the tab, which is fine. How do I make that into a string? Well, before I do that, I must convert it from what it is, float to string. You'll notice, however, they're all to one decimal place. I wonder if we should maybe use float to string F. And then we can put in FF fixed, comma, 8, comma, 2. Because that's how we can display something to a particular decimal place, which is actually one, because we display to one decimal place. Um, let's just test it to see if it's working. I don't want to do all the work and then the final is not working. Okay, so looking good so far. Um, and to work smart and not hard, I'm actually just going to copy this. Don't tell anyone. No, it's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. I'm going to paste the next line because it's very similar. So we're going to say the word circumference. I use both circumference. And also put a hash nine. And now in this place, we're going to put the circumference variable. And then I'm going to do that all again and copy and paste it. And this time put the area in the label part. And then the variable that we put here will be the area variable. Let's see if it works. And calculate. There we go. All looks very nice. Look at those values. Um, and let's go look at our form. Do they look similar? There we go, the values look all good. That's great. Now, so that's done, fantastic. Now we go to the next question, which has to do with the triangle. So the user will enter in the base and the height of a right angle triangle. And using Pythagoras, we can work out the hypotenuse. And for, once we have the hypotenuse, then we'll have the, side, the sides or the lengths of all three sides. We can then work out the perimeter, which is just them added together. And the area would just be half times the base times the height, which we have in the beginning. And then, so there they tell us all the calculations. And it must be displayed very similar to what we just did. Except for now we've got two inputs. So well, let's go. So there's our two inputs, EDT height and EDT base. So they've got some variables at the top. So let's do the input first. And that's first getting the base value from EDT base. What property of the edit box we're going to get from? From the text property. Now, as you remember, that was a real number that's been put in. So we need to convert the string from a string to a float so that it can fit into our base. Otherwise, it won't fit because strings don't fit into reals. Now we need the height. It's going to be very similar. We're going to get it from the EDT height uh, edit control. We're going to get it from its text. Um, property and before we can do that however that's also a string so I'm just converted from a string to a float so we can get those two values we've stored them into variables we've done the input now let's do the calculations now first of all we have to work out the hypotenuse because we can't work out the perimeter without it we can work out the area but not the perimeter so the path funny name for a variable, is equal. So let's work, look at the calculation again. We take the base, we square it, we take the height, square it, we add those two numbers together, and that whole thing gets square rooted. Okay, so I'm glad that my R path is a real because we're dealing with reals and we are square rooting things, which sends back a real. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square the base. And then I'm going to add on to that the square of the height. And then all of that needs to be square rooted. Once that answer is completed, it needs to be square rooted. So I'm going to say square root, open bracket, and put everything that I want to square root inside there. There we go. So we square the base, we square the height, we add them together, and we find the square root. You could have also used power over year as well. That would have also worked. Or R base times R base. That would have also worked. So I've worked out the hypotenuse. Now I can work out the perimeter, which is just those variables added together. The base plus, oh, that's not the base, that's bay. Before anyone else, or bacon and eggs. Then we're going to add the heart. The perimeter is. Uh, if you had to put a fence around the triangle, like if you, along the lines of the triangle, so that's just the lengths of all the sides added together, and then the hypotenuse added together, and then the area. If we remember from maths class, it was half base times height. If I remember, half times the base times the height. 
That's fine. Easy to use. So half. So I can go one over two multiplied by the base multiplied by the height. Now because of bond mass, it doesn't really matter that I don't put brackets around it because it does it all together. So that should be fine. We'll test it with the results, and now we get to the output, which we're going to put in the memo control. The first line we're going to add is the heading called Triangle Details. That was the first one. And then we had to put in the hypotenuse, perimeter, and area with a little tab, and then the actual values to one decimal place. So let's go. So first we're going to add a new line to the upper. I'm not going to change the text, just add a new line with the word hypotenuse. I don't even know how to spell hypotenuse. Hypo the new. Hypo the, the, the new. There we go. I think that's right. Hopefully it's right. And then we're going to add a hash nine. And then we're going to add the R path variable. However, we're constructing a string here and we're adding the string to the memory control, and that's not part of the string. That's a float or a real. So we're going to convert from a float to a string. However, we want to display it to one decimal place. So I can't use float to string. I'm going to use float to string F. And then I'll say FF fixed over here and then eight because I don't mind how many places in front of the decimal. What I am concerned is what's after the decimal, which is only one. Only one place after the decimal, only one value. And then I'm going to copy this because it's working smart, not hard. There's nothing wrong with working smart. Then we're going to put the perimeter. And instead of the R path, we're going to put the R perim variable there. We can do that all again, but this time we're going to work out the uh, the area, and we're going to display the area variable. So let's see if that works. It's hopefully let us get the same value. So there's our program. I'm going to open up the question so we can compare results. Okay, do we get the same results? Looks like we do. Then it looks like we've got all the marks. So that means another 19 marks for us. That's pretty good. All four questions are done. I hope you found these questions useful. I hope it's giving you some insight in how to do input process output. Um, so I hope this video has been valuable.